so this is your first show here. Uh, yes. what's, that, what's that like? It's great. It's, uh, I have obviously been coming to Florida Stage since I arrived in Florida, mm -hmm. and my wife, Laura, has worked at Florida Stage several times, mm -hmm. and I've always been very jealous. <laughs> and uh, I've always looked forward to the opportunity, and I'm very thankful to finally be here on this kind of a piece, especially. Very good. You know, there's nothing more exciting to me than working on a world premiere. Mm -hmm. uh, what's interesting in this play is the irony of uh, the last two Jews of Kabul who hate each other, and yet they're trying to build, trying to rebuild their community. And so in spite of themselves, they feel uh, they have to do whatever they can uh, to ensure that there will be a future for their culture, mm -hmm. for their people. It's the feeling of that spirituality that they both share, mm -hmm. uh, and they are together in that realm, but down here on Earth, it's... Mm -hmm. It's not a Hatfield McCoy kind of thing. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a family ingrained. rivalry that goes back many years. Mm -hmm. And they came here after the Second World War. Their families left the concentration camps. And of all places, his family decided that Afghanistan, Afghanistan was the best place to go for the Jewish people to have a life. And my family followed his family here and the rivalry began the hatred started mm -hmm. uh, yeah because it was only, my family's his, idea of course they could right. have left but they would rather stand around and complain right well this yeah, character Ishak has memorized the entire Torah by heart with the punctuation <laughs> and the Taliban stole our Torah six years ago and we've lived without one for six years. We are now the last two Jews of Kabul. And in order to perpetuate the faith, we've come up with this plan that we have to somehow figure out a way to get an Afghan woman to convert to Judaism, or two women to convert to Judaism and have our babies so there'll be more Jews. And we can repopulate. And repopulate the, the, the Jewish. Jewish people. But in order to do that, you have to have a rabbi to convert them. In order to get a rabbi, you have to have a Torah to be able to bring a rabbi. And so, therefore, the only way to get a Torah would be to buy one, steal one. We don't have the money to buy one. Steal one, not going to happen. From where? From where, you know. <laughs> and ultimately, he comes up with the idea that we have to write our own. And he can dictate the entire thing from beginning to end but he's too old and his hands aren't... So I can't write it myself. He can't write so it, so I become the vessel within which the Torah gets written. Okay. So all of this, you know, yeah, you can start with what's obvious. <laughs> I haven't done this in a while. Ow! Ow! <laughs> Ow! Ow! <laughs> so is this the first time you've had your head shaved? First time I've shaved my head, yes. Uh -huh. I've been working on it alone. Yes. Uh, but this is faster, apparently. Shaved. Woo. Don't go woo when you're in <laughs> So what is the reason for the head shave? Uh, is it to make him look older or to... Yeah, well, two things. One, I think he, there's, there's kind of a, you know, a more of an Eastern look or a more exotic look to him. Um, there's a, you know, a less of a Western look um, and it ages him. Mm -hmm. At least that's the hope. Well, there's no going back, pal. No, it right. Work. <laughs> <laughs> it's on there. I'm gonna yeah, throw it on the floor. Be... 